What I'm gonna be doing in this video is walking you guys through the process of lacing and truing a front wheel. What's up guys? My name is Greg Hitchko. If you don't know, this is my 1999 KX250. We're gonna be doing a couple things to it today. So let's get going. So yeah, not really sure what that intro was about, but I'm feeling spunky, excited to work on the bike today. So if you guys have seen my prior videos on the 1999 KX250, you would know that when I took the front tire off to put a Dunlop MX-53 tire on it, I noticed a hairline crack in the OEM rim, which I was pretty bummed about. But not to worry, what I ended up doing was actually buying a brand new XL Takasago rim for it. I was very surprised that I was able to strip all of the spokes off of the stock hub and rim. Um, I pretty much only had a problem with five of the spokes. I was able to work four of them off with a little bit of heat and vice grips grabbing the spoke, but one was on there super bad. So what I ended up doing was throwing that spoke lengthwise in the vise, really cranking down on it, using a ton of heat on that nipple. I was just able to use the spoke wrench and kind of tweak it back and forth just a little bit until it finally loosened up, which I'm really pumped about. So since I was able to salvage those spokes, I'm able to use all of them and not have to buy a spoke kit. You guys know that Rocky Mountain ATV MC is a huge supporter of this channel. I see you guys using my affiliate link in my description below to help support the channel, so thank you for that. But before we get a crack of lacking on lacing this front wheel, stop by Napa, grab some aluminum brightener, some of these detailing brushes that seem like they could work pretty great on uh, cleaning this hub up, so I'm gonna give that a shot real quick. So after using the aluminum brightener, seemed to work all right. Seems to be a pretty strong solution, so I don't recommend letting it sit on there too long. Kind of clean it, brush your spot, and then rinse it off. Seems like it could have potential to blacken the aluminum a little bit, but pretty happy the way it turned out and definitely uh, much cleaner. All right guys, so I got everything all set up. I'm gonna give you some tips right now that are gonna help you tremendously when you go to lace your wheel yourself. So tip number one is to take a picture of the spoke pattern before you unlace the wheel. Um, these things only really go together one way, so if you mess it up, no big deal, you can take it back apart, but taking a picture of it will definitely help when putting it back together. Two is notice that we've got the brake disc side and the non-brake disc side. On these XL rims here, they also have the lettering on one side of the rim. So take note when you take the, before you take the wheel off again, make sure to take note where the lettering is. So the lettering when I took the wheel apart was on the non-disc side. So when I put the spokes back together, I'm gonna put the non-disc side on the side where the lettering is. Also fun fact on these XL rims, thanks to this tip by Ryan Lester, the last three digits stamped on the rim here are when it was made. So 322, it was made in March 22. If I bring my OEM rim here up on the table, you can see that the number is stamped 898. That means it was made in August of 1998. So a little fun fact there for you guys, which I think is really cool. Also, when you're taking your spokes out, notice how on the pattern here, there's a top spoke and a bottom spoke hole. So again, you have the non-disc side and the disc side. So make sure you label the, which spokes came off of where when you take it apart because I don't think on this rim, I think all the spokes are the same, but on other models, you could have a difference, especially on the rear wheel between the disc side and the sprocket side. So just take note of which ones came out of the top, which ones came out of the bottom, and the non-disc disc side, and the disc side. And as far as the nipples go, it doesn't really matter. Those are all just universal. Next tip, the reason why some spokes don't come apart is because water and dirt get in there and it basically seizes the spoke inside the nipple. So what you guys can do is use some anti-seize, use the toothbrush, I'll probably use this later brushing my teeth, but squirt a little of the anti-seize on the toothbrush here. And then take your spokes just like this and just kind of brush the anti-seize on the threads of the spokes. Make sure, you, uh, make sure you're not too shy with the NICs here. You can always clean it up afterwards, but this will help prevent the spokes from rusting and seizing up inside the nipples, making it a lot easier, one, to tighten them back down if they loosen up, or take them apart if you need to relace the rim. Next step is getting the wheel laced up. So the pattern is the trickiest part, guys. Don't let this intimidate you. So you're gonna start with the bottom holes and you're gonna fill the spokes in all the way around the rim on the bottom. And then you'll notice on the side of the rim here how there's holes that point down and then there's a hole that points up. 
So whichever side of the rim you're working on, so we're working on this non-disc side here, you're gonna to wanna to position the spokes to the holes that point up. You also notice that the spoke is kind of angled at the top as well. Once you see me start lacing it in there, you're gonna see the pattern develop. So again, we're gonna feed the spoke through the bottom hole. So now with the angle of the spoke, it could, it could go that way or it could go that way. That's kind of where it gets confusing. So this side's a little easier to see. I'll fish a spoke through the bottom hole and you can see the angle of the spoke here. So, so the angle is sharper against the hub or it's less sharp, more like 90 degrees. So this is more like 45 degrees. This is more like 90 degrees. You wanna make sure the spokes are angled at the more open angle, the 90 degree angle, rather than the more acute or sharper angle. The next step is trying to figure out what hole to put it at. This hole is pointing up, this hole is pointing down, this hole is pointing up, this hole is pointing down. This hole pointing up is facing angled this way, and then this hole pointing up is facing angled that way. So with this spoke, the way the angle is going, you're working on this side of the rim, so find a hole that's pointing up and at the same angle to where the spoke is going. For example, let me rotate the rim a little bit. This spoke hole is facing up, but it's angled this way, not that way, the opposite direction of where the spoke is going. So I'm just gonna move the rim back, Boom, I'm facing the spoke toward the correct angle hole and it's pointing up. And then guys, as you lace the rim, you'll notice it actually gets pretty easy. So you're gonna notice that every fourth hole is gonna be one that's pointing the correct angle and facing up. So count one, two, three, four. This one is facing up and at the correct angle you need to go. So now let's get the bottom spokes all laced up. However you wanna call it, either the fifth hole or the fourth hole, if you count one, two, three, four, that's where that spoke is going to. One, two, three, four, that's where that spoke is going to. And that is the pattern that we've found through the entire rim. So when you get the top spokes laced in now, which are gonna go the opposite way, you're gonna get them lined up to the other holes. So you're overlapping over the bottom spoke. That's why you put them in second. The top one is in second and then they're gonna line up to the spoke holes pointing up. So by the time all the top spokes are in, you'll kind of end up with this pattern. You'll notice that a top and a bottom spoke end up parallel to each other. Here, 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 and it continues to go around the rim. So if you guys don't have that pattern, you need to stop and reevaluate and see where you messed up. But the next step is just put the nipples on. You may have to lift up on the rim just a little bit to get the spoke and the nipple on, but just kind of loosely put the nipple on. Don't tighten it down all the way. Just like four or five threads, I would say. And then you'll notice once all the nipples are on the rim, you'll notice that the rim is just lifted up off the table just a little bit. So pretty much, guys, you just repeat that same process on the other side. This side's a little bit easier because you've got less holes to worry about. Easier to line them up. And then actually guys, it might be a little bit easier for you if you put the nipples on for these spokes now and then go ahead and fill in the top row of spokes. Next tip guys is not to go ham on tightening down the individual spokes and nipples just yet. What you wanna do is tighten them down evenly at this point. I like to leave at least three or four little threads at the top of the spoke here. And then once I do that, that'll, that's gonna help even the wheel out and make it a lot easier when you actually go to throw it on the truing stand. Then what I like to do is take the next step and just tighten up all the spokes until I eliminate all of the threads on the spoke. Again, this process is trying to help you true the wheel as much as possible before you go and throw it onto the truing stand. Is it gonna work 100% all the time? No, but it's definitely gonna help you out for sure. It also helps to do this with a drill or an impact gun because it goes way faster than trying to do it with a spoke wrench. All right, so time to get the wheel on the truing stand, guys. The fact of the matter is, one of these things makes it so much easier to get your wheel trued. Can you true your wheel on the bike? Yes. Have I done it before? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Is it a lot more complicated? Yes. But it can be done. Pretty much all you need to do is throw the axle through the wheel, and then you're gonna put a zip tie around the fork leg here, and then this, the zip tie is gonna act as basically 
your truing mechanism to figure out whether the wheel is true or not. So you're gonna spin the wheel against that zip tie and you're gonna true against that zip tie. The bright side of this method is you don't need to buy the $70 Tusk truing stand from Rocky Mountain. The problem is that zip tie can move around on you and can be a lot more difficult to get your wheel trued and then in return be a lot more frustrating. I did that on my 07 Kawasaki KX250 build and it worked fine, but it just took me hours to do so. <laughs> Since I do this a lot, I invested in this Tusk truing stand from Rocky Mountain, 70 bucks. It's definitely worth it on my end. You guys have to debate whether it's worth it for you or not. Once you got the spacers tight on the bearing on the inside, move these side spacers to the outside and butt it up against the truing stand here so the rim doesn't move left to right. So this is the truing bar here. The first thing we're gonna do is true up that side to side motion. So get it pretty close to the rim, but not too close because the rim could be really out of whack. Doesn't seem too bad. So we can kind of bring it a little bit close here. So I try to get this thing as close as possible so the rim doesn't hit, so I know how much I'm working with here. Now I'm gonna spin it fast first so you guys kinda get an idea of the wobble. Ah, yeah, we got a pretty good wobble. So I could probably even move that in a little bit closer. There we go. So I like to work the rim on the spots where it seems to be the farthest gap between this rod here and the rim. So I found that spot right here. So the reason why there's such a big gap is because the spokes on the right side of the rim are tighter than the spokes on the left side. So what you're gonna do is tighten on the left side. The one spoke in the center here, and at least one or two before it and after it. So this spoke, this spoke, and this spoke are considered to be on the left side of the rim. And you can see how this spoke, this spoke, and this spoke on the right side of the rim. You don't wanna to touch the spokes on the right side, just strictly touch the ones on the left. So you're gonna start by tightening the one in the center. Probably give that two turns and then tighten the one after it. And then tighten the one before it. So guys, that's pretty much gonna be the process throughout truing the side to side motion. If you happen to be getting stuck, it also doesn't hurt to pick the wheel up and do a little 180 with the rim and kind of work that other side from side to side. When the gap is small like this, it means the spokes on the left side of the rim are tighter than the spokes on the right side. So what you want to do is actually tighten the spokes on the right side, the four spokes in this general area to help pull the rim to the right a little bit. So this is the tedious part guys of getting the rim trued. This is the most frustrating part for sure, but just take your time, be patient with it. And as you start to get the rim more and true, you don't need to make as large of adjustments on the spokes. Sometimes you just need to go like a quarter of a turn on the right side or left side and not a big full turn. And then guys, as you get closer to becoming true, don't be afraid of moving this bar closer to the rim. I'm gonna zoom in real close to give you guys an idea of what I'm looking at. And just look at the shadow. When you're getting down to the nitty gritty here, that's how you can tell how close the bar is to the rim or not. So when I spin the rim, you can see how the shadow kind of moves closer and farther away. So when, it's, when the shadow moves closer, obviously the rim is closer to the bar than when the shadow is farther away. So there's just another tip to help you guys out too. Work with that shadow, because then you can figure out where you're at. So moving forward, the closer you get the rim to being true, the closer you can get this bar to the rim. Just be super careful though. You don't want to like get it right on the rim where it scratches the rim, but just lightly kiss it. You can get it so close that the bar just basically grazes the rim there. So again, that's a tight spot. What I want to do is tighten the spokes on the right side of the rim, but just to show you how close you can get that rim. And then here's another tight spot here with the bars just slightly grazing that rim. Again, not enough pressure to scratch it, but just to let me know, hey, it's kind of pulled to the left and we need to pull it to the right. All right, moving to that up and down motion. You guys can see now that we've got some up and down. The side to side is pretty much out of it. Probably spent another 20 minutes or so kind of just trying to dial in the side to side. If it feels like you're getting close, but then all of a sudden it just feels like you went the opposite way and it's more out of true, that happens. It's going to happen, so don't get frustrated. Like I said, just take your time. So we're gonna move the bar to underneath the rim here. And again, same process. We're gonna figure out where the rim is close to the bar and where the rim is farther away from the bar, like in that situation. How do you true the up and down, do you ask? Well, when the rim is close to the bar, it means that the spokes on the bottom of the rim here are looser than the spokes up on the top. So basically what we're gonna do is tighten like four to five spokes in succession here on the bottom. You don't have to skip every other one. You wanna tighten them in succession now. So you've got the spoke in the center here where it's pretty close. I'm just gonna start two back and give those spokes like, I don't know, maybe a quarter of a turn 
to help tighten up these spokes here, which is gonna bring the rim up a little bit away from that bar. So that's the process for pretty much the up and down truing up the wheel guys. I pretty much target when the rim gets close to the bar here and eventually you'll get that up and down wobble out of the wheel. And once you do that, what I would suggest is going back and checking the side to side motion because sometimes adjusting that up and down will affect the side to side, but you'll be a lot closer now up and down. So when you go back and adjust that side to side, the up and down motion should be good. All right guys, I think I'm throwing in the towel on this wheel and I think that is gonna be the closest that I am going to get it. There's the bottom up and down motion. There's just the slightest amount that you can see. And I'm also really happy with that side to side motion as well. Unless you are an extreme expert, like one of these wheel building companies, it's gonna be really hard to get that thing 1000% straight. If you're a little bit off, don't be scared. It's a freaking dirt bike wheel, guys. Just throw it on there. You're not gonna notice it. And if it's your first time doing this, think of it as a learning experience and have some fun doing it. But that's gonna be a wrap, guys, on this video, getting this XL Takasago rim laced up to my 99K XC50. If you guys do have any questions on the process, definitely leave a comment below. Or if you have another way and others, or other tips and suggestions to teach someone on how to lace a rim, also leave that in the comments below. Because heck, I'm not an expert at it and your tips and comments could help me for the next time I lace a rim. Probably in the back one. If you guys are enjoying the content on the 1999 KX250, make sure you go ahead and punch that like button for me. Um, in the next video, we're gonna be working on some rear brakes, doing a little upgrade to those. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But as always guys, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.